So let's check out this Honda Odyssey. People say if you've got a vibration that changes when you press the accelerator or changes when you go up a hill, in other words, the vibration is not there when you're not pressing on the accelerator and then it is there, people are saying that has to be due to the axles. They're saying replace your axles. Well, I replaced the axles and I still had the same problem. Uh, I want you to follow me on this journey. We go through the axles, we go through replacing the intermediate shaft bearing and finally find the problem with the uh, brake rotor itself. If you've got a Honda Odyssey that has a vibration problem, you will find this interesting. So what have I done? <clears throat> Yesterday I took out the passenger side half shaft. If this is forward, it sits in the vehicle this way, that's the wheel. And here it meets the intermediate axle, which we're going to talk some more about. <clears throat> and there was a lot of play, not between these two elements, which meet, you know, with this, those three roller kind of whatever they're called, spider or something or other, but between the intermediate axle going in here and, and this you know, boot, whatever this is, this element. So I replaced it. I put a new one in. The new one has quite a significant amount of play as well. And I want to go under the vehicle and show you that because I'm wondering, does, is there an unusual amount of wear between the intermediate axle and this element? that would cause this to sit off-center under load and then cause that vibration. Why am I going here for it? Because I've replaced the motor mounts, I've replaced the shocks, I've replaced the lower control arms, I've replaced the tie rod ends. I have nowhere else to look. Of course I've had the wheels balanced, rebalanced, tire force balanced. I've had everything done that I can think of. Uh, the only places I have left to look are between this. It's got 230,000 kilometers. It's been stolen, recovered. It's been driven in Ontario, in Quebec, in the Rust Belt. It's not, uh, it's had a rough go. It's had a rough go, this vehicle. But I want to accelerate to 140 kilometers an hour and not see a ripple in my T. And uh, I'm going to make that happen. <clears throat> so, we can take this out, I've supported it with the jack stand underneath here, and then we should be able to tap this, can you see this? You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I should have my gloves on. Just make sure these lines are loose and they're not going to catch. So now that that's loose, <clears throat> what I like to do, well I saw somebody else do this, I don't want the, this knuckle hanging on these lines so I'm just going to wrap it loosely with a tie and then there's only so far I can go to make sure these are not pulling and there it is, and that's gonna allow me to get this steering knuckle out of there. Or uh, get the spindle out of this steering knuckle. <clears throat> and this 
is what I've been talking about. You are? On, the, on their main page, I saw this thing. Mm hmm. Did you know there's only. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only seven. I couldn't get that out while this was still on, but moving that gives you enough clearance to get around to get the bolts that hold this on, which are. That's upright in the car. So that's the one that's a little bit hidden around back and they're all uh, 14 millimeter socket. I guess this is what this is what I'm interested in. I'm going to have a look at this and get back to you. You know, this goes in there and it's over quite a length of you know, I don't know how long it is. It's We got the bearing support just sitting on a block of wood, just simply so that it will float the, uh, it's just floating very lightly this. So otherwise, this sits on the, just a sec, just a sec. Otherwise, this sits on the bench top and I don't really get a good uh, view of what's going on. There it is. You see that movement gets translated into the shaft. So if either of these pieces wants to move, they are free to do that. So I couldn't find that bearing anywhere online. I had to order it from Honda. So the guy's going to order it for me tomorrow. I gotta put this all back in the van now because wife needs it. But I am interested to see how tight the new bearing is gonna make this and whether or not this will finally get to the bottom of this vibration issue. So we got the new bearing and the first step is gonna to be to remove the oil seal up the intermediate shaft. I am kind of pushing it back down with the other other end, so we'll see if this works. I need to handle uh, the ed opposite edge of the seal and was able to pop it out there. Next up is to uh, remove the snap ring. Well, it's loose. That worked. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down. You know what I'm going to do next. Now, we got to press this out. And uh, I, got, I got to go look one more time at the manual. Make sure that I'm going to press the right thing out from underneath here. I got to support it the right way. So I'm guessing we're just going to support it around here. Around what's not rusted. I'll show you once I have it set up in the press. Alright friends, here's my uh, setup in the press. This is the second time I used this press. I bought it at uh, Princess Auto up in Canada to uh, push out the wheel bearings on that same vehicle. And this will be the second time I've used it. It's a 10 ton, 10 ton press. And you know the it pays for itself the first time you use it, right? 
So the value, what is the value of doing things yourself? I've been trying to figure it out because it's a lot more than just saving the money. You know, you understand how things work. I had no idea that there was an intermediate shaft. I guess I'd seen it, but I'd never given it any thought, what it does. And so when you do things yourself, you learn how it goes. So once it's in contact there, you can see it starts to move. And that thing is not a pressure meter. That's a nervousness meter for me. The higher that goes, the scareder I get. That something's gonna come loose and some piece is gonna go shooting across the room. So I'm putting the phone down. I'll, uh, I'll show you the result. So uh, it was about two, two tons, two tons of pressure that it all of a sudden just snapped and started moving. This is our amazing, hey? Do I need to be worried that I'm gonna press it right out and it's gonna fall? Yeah, of course. So let's put something under there so another piece of metal for it to fall on. That's nice. Whoop. There we go. See, it's the nervousness meter, man. I hate this thing, but it's awesome at the same time. Back at the bench. Now we got a snap ring on that side too. So we're gonna pop that thing out and then we're gonna press the bearing out of here. You wanna watch this or you just prefer to see it when it's done? I don't know. So I give you the option because you can fast forward it if you want to. Uh, this is the wrong kind, right? Yeah, I need to, I need to squeeze it in. There's no substitute for a good set of snap ring pliers. There we go. It's always like playing Operation, you know? You play that game when you were a kid? Don't touch the sides. And let's push that out and see just how bad it is. So this thing's gonna, the bearing's gonna get pressed out from the top down now. So we're just gonna set it back up uh, in the press and we'll see uh, how we press it out. Get this out of here. Guess we'll should have a look at this to clean it up, re-grease it. So what I find that fits the best is that size used with this to go in there and we'll press it. So I have it supported this way for now. Obviously I can't push the bearing all the way out because these uh, supports are sitting uh, underneath where the bearing would move, but it's got about this far that it can go before, so I'm just going to kind of break it. Oh, it's already, it's already pressing out with like no pressure. So I'll push it as far as it'll let me go, which is right there. And then I'll have to rearrange the supports to just hold it by the edge. So it's coming out very easily. So if we uh, take a look at the new bearing versus the old, I don't know if we can see see the detail on that anyway the differences with the bearing again hard to show you with one hand but there's play between the inner and outer race here you can see I can rotate this easily with one finger and no noise no grinding in the bearing just that play between the inner and outer race new bearing significantly stiffer we're going to press this uh, new one back in and then we'll 
get the sh get it back on the shaft. When we press it back together, we pressed it out this way, pushing down here. So, of course, we're going to push the new one in this way. There's a little lip, so we're going to press the bearing down to there. So this is my setup here. I'm using the old bearing to push the new bearing in, and it's going in really easy, really easy. No pressure required at all. Then double check on the back side that there's no space between the bearing and that, that lip. So a good idea to clean everything up. Cleaner and uh, compressed air. Make sure you're not introducing any dirt. It does need to be there for the new bearing. First time, can you believe it was the first time that I tried that? They almost always go flying on the first time. It was the first time. So now we have to press the uh, old intermediate shaft back into the bearing. So a good idea just to remind yourself how this went in the vehicle that's up in the vehicle and the shaft was over here. Because there's a bunch of ways you could do this wrong. You could try to put it in this side. You could try to put this end in that side. You could try to put this end in that side. So there's four ways you can mess it up. The dirty, grungy end with the grease on it. You know, because this end also has one of those. So uh, what other differences are there? That end looks like that. The lip looks like that. This end, the lip looks like this. So I'm just going to clean this all up and then... We're going to press it back in that way. So here's what I got uh, set up. We can, uh, we can pinch it as close as we want once the shaft is in uh, so to support it. They've built this so that we can't catch this on, on there so that's, that's nice. Just make sure everything is kind of straight up and see what happens. So it seems to be pushing together nicely. Just a couple, couple fingers of pressure. How far are we supposed to go? I'm not exactly sure. I'm just gonna have a look around the other side. So after a few more, a uh, few more pumps on there, we definitely hit a stop. Uh, one ton pressure there just stops moving, stops creaking in. So you should feel the same thing, and I'm sure we'll find the snap ring. Uh, available to be pressed in next. So here we have it out of the uh, out of the press, and just going to get the uh, snap ring and the seal cleaned up. We should reload this with uh, with grease on the inside. So we'll get all that old uh, dirty grease out of there, regrease it, and get it ready to go. So I don't want you to miss the the simple steps. I need a third hand again because I need to push this side. Can't do it. Alright, so with the second hand we got the uh, O-ring cleaned up and nicely seated. Now we're just going to uh, put some grease in the back of the seal and then put the seal back in its, back in its home. With the seal re-greased and pressed back into position, I'm kind of anxious to put these two things back together now. So I'm going to do what I did last time, just uh, clamp this down there with a wooden clamp and put these back together with a little grease. And uh, I want to see if there's a difference in the play. So the first thing we can notice with the new bearing on is Maybe hard for you to see, but there is still some degree of play between the shaft and the bearing support housing. That's kind of sad news for me because I think it wasn't. I don't think this is going to make a big difference when we put it back together now. 
It's too bad. So what do we see here, guys? This is the after shot. Let's get some light in there. Hopefully you can see with the new bearing in there, it moves just like it did before. We have to say this is normal. Normal expected. Why? Why would that move like that? And what is it exactly that's moving? Well, we know now. It's just the amount of play, I guess, that's in even a new bearing. Okay, back in it goes. Well, sadly, didn't make a difference. Couldn't be sure that it wasn't slightly improved, but it kind of comes and goes that vibration anyways. So what did we learn? We learned what's normal for that intermediate shaft play. I still don't really know why it does that, but anyway, that's normal. The saga continues with this Odyssey. Kind of disappointed. I really thought I was onto something there, but Maybe it will help you to know um, what you can expect in terms of play in that intermediate shaft and whether or not you need to replace your bearing because there are uh, a fair number of uh, posts online that talk about that intermediate bearing. Just never seen a video of anybody uh, doing it. So I'll contribute that even though it didn't solve my problem just so other people know uh, how to press that out and if there's this bad how to change it. I'll make sure I let you know if I uh, discover, ever discover what's wrong with that vibration. Take care YouTubers. Hey YouTubers, it's still me. I got uh, both these, both the shafts replaced now. Still have the vibration. Don't know where else to turn so I decided to take the rotors off and uh, I did the backs and I'm doing the fronts and I've been going I don't know how long these aren't in that bad shape really but there is a lot of rust coming off as you can see but what's interesting is I can see through all of these holes it was just plugging the screwdriver through there but then when I got to got to try to get the light in there at the same time see how here I can do that there's some kind of obstruction in this one and this one's completely blocked that's going to make an imbalance for sure. So I'm going to unplug this. This is the last of the four wheels that I'm doing. It's the first thing significant that I found. So who knows? Just wanted to show that to you in case this solves it. I have to hold the light there. No. Anyway, it's amazing on one side of this roller they seem to be all jammed in. They're all jammed together. Like, look, they're big square openings. And that it was totally plugged. It was plugged full. And that's going to create an imbalance for sure. Well, it's 1.25 in the morning. And uh, I just got back from test driving that Odyssey. And I got to say, it's improved. It seems like I'm creeping up on the solution. Um, there's no, there's no way I could get everything that was jammed up in that rotor out of there. I worked on it for probably 45 minutes just to get a small hole through. I don't know what crawled up inside that one recess and and died there, but uh, it's weird that those spaces on that one side of the rotor were all kind of jammed up compared to the the other side where it was really free flowing so you know if, if I had something to test whether the rotor was out of balance I would do that and I might take that to a guy on Monday to see about that if, uh, if somebody could tell me if a rotor is out of balance but I think probably what I'll do 
Probably what I'll do is uh, put new front rotors on. And then we'll see. Then we'll see what's happening. But definitely 90, 95 kilometers an hour, that is, you don't feel anything anymore. But still at 110, 120, you definitely still feel something. So it continues, but at least I feel like we're moving in the right direction. And that's a good thing. My wife picked up the rotors. So what we need to say about this is there's a lot of talk online that if under acceleration, if the vibration changes, then you don't have a sort of static problem like rotors or wheels. The imbalance can't be there because if it was, it would be there all the time and it wouldn't change under acceleration. And I totally agreed with that. I think I'm about to call that fake news and uh, say that no matter what kind of vibration you have, you need to look everywhere. Because this Odyssey has just been step-by-step -step improvements where everything has made it a little bit better. But axles contribute. Bearing, intermediate bearing contributes. Motor mounts contribute. Wheel balance, rotor imbalance. Everything contributes, right? It doesn't make sense to me. It's not obvious to me why um, putting the accelerator or the brake on is, should affect uh, something which is always imbalanced, like in the rotor. But I'm putting I'm putting these two new ones on. I'm going to show you the old one too. I don't know what is in there or why it's in there, but uh, I want you to see what it is. So wheels off. What I like to use is one of these uh, rubberized metal ties. I tie that around there in preparation for taking the, uh, the rotor off and then I can tie it up on there. It's super easy. Super easy to undo. <clears throat> what are we gonna need? We're gonna need uh, that little Phillips. We need 19, 19 millimeter for the bolts around back. 12 millimeter right there. I'm gonna tie this up. If this gets stuck, you put some, uh, I think M6 screws in there. This size. And you thread them, thread them in there, one by one, uh, and you can push, push that out. So let's get started. For these, you know, makes life so much easier. You won't strip those. Super simple. Leave those screws on before, uh, until you take this off. It's just gonna make undoing that bolt easier. You see? Just tie that up out of the way. It's coming off pretty easy. <clears throat> so 
So when we look at the, you know, these are cooling passages, I guess. Anyway, I guess stuff building up on one particular side of this. Yeah, so on this side you can see like just how similar the new and the old ones look. You know, they're still pretty consistent. But as we roll this thing around to this one side, I don't know why it would be this way. It's right in here. You can see how rounded the passages are and there's build up all the way down. Whereas these are like open all the way through. So you just make sure that uh, the beveled the ones that are recessed for the screws are going to go on the same spot. There's only one orientation that it that it can go. Don't get these confused with these, right? Those are the, the holes for pushing it out if things go bad next time around. And if you wanted to, you could put you could put some anises anises around uh, around there. That wouldn't wouldn't hurt at all. Get that tool again. Make sure it's going on straight. My brake pads. Take that down. Wouldn't be the first guy to ever leave that up there. That's how I torque those. Just think about this. These are in. This is on. The two bolts we took off are back in. That's back on. We got the wire out of there. The tire can go back on. And we'll do the other side the same way. Well, YouTubers, I'm driving back in after the test drive, and uh, that did it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's finally, finally over. The vibration is gone. Is it completely gone? It's 99% gone. Sure, there's something in the back that's like not gonna bother me and I'm picky. So, uh, <laughs> unbelievable. An unbelievable journey. Perseverance, patience, money, a patient wife, and uh, not giving up on this issue. So what's really, really important to note about this okay is that acceleration a change in vibration under acceleration can be in the wheels it can be in the rotors okay it's not just in the axles uh, a lot of people saying yeah if, if it changes when you accelerate it's got to be the axles torquing something out of alignment sure that makes sense to me didn't happen that wasn't my experience it was still there after I changed the axles it was in the rotors but I can tell you that up to 90 kilometers an hour what is that 90 it's about 50 55 or so 55 miles an hour perfectly smooth in this van perfectly smooth as soon as I hit 55 to 60 
or 100 kilometers an hour, all of a sudden it's shaking, it's noticeably bad. Uh, but I can tell you that braking action is now glass smooth and uh, it's going to be fun to drive this van again. Except we're selling it now. So, anyway, the other thing is you, you have to entertain the option that it is a number of contributing factors. It could be a little bit of axles, be a chaff bearing, could be a little bit in the wheels, could be a little bit in, uh, in the rotors. Just gonna keep hunting until you've got it solved. Of course, could be the lower control arms, could be the motor mounts, could be the tie rod ends, could be the sway bar links. But if you methodically go through, use your noggin and methodically go through, make notes about what you've done, you will find it and you will return your Odyssey to a beautiful condition again. And uh, I'm super happy now, man, because I've been disappointed so many times, finally taking my foot off the accelerator at 110 and feeling it smooth. That was a delight, I can tell you that. Going home to celebrate. Take care, YouTubers.